Hello, and welcome to Swashbuckling with Code. I'm Jimmy Cleveland, and we're going to be talking about continuous integration today as the topic for this video, which is going to be part of a little series that I'm going to be doing on the topic. If you're not already here from the playlist, I will have a link in the description, so you can check that out if you want to see the whole series. I'm going to be working under the lens of Git and GitHub for these videos, so the terminology that I use will you know, largely lean toward that. If you're not already familiar with Git, uh, I suggest learning that first. I unfortunately don't have any videos up yet on the topic, but I hope to soon. And you'll also probably want to learn, uh, you know, your version control of choice, whether it's GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, or something like that. For this video, I'm going to be covering the definition of continuous integration, both the formal and what I hope to be a practical uh, definition for it, so that you can kind of understand what you're going to get into and why you might want it in your workflow. The videos following this one will mostly be code oriented. Uh, we'll be diving into doing GitHub actions. We'll be setting up some linting and testing to kind of show some practical examples of that. We'll even get a little bit into like continuous deployment with Netlify and Versal. And past that, I haven't decided yet what we'll get into. It kind of depends on interest in the series at that point. So we'll see. So what even is continuous integration? You know, what, what's it useful for and what does it even mean? I think a lot of newer developers or even experienced developers get a little bit of anxiety from hearing this term if they're not used to working in it or they're not quite sure exactly what it is. It's kind of abstractly defined a lot of times. So Wikipedia defines it as the practice of merging all developers working copies to a shared mainline several times a day. In Git terms, this typically means that the developers are branching off of a main branch to create their own feature bug fix branch and what have you and then they'll be merging that back in and they need to be merging that back in really frequently that's the important part let me give you a brief definition from atlassian here so continuous integration is the practice of automating the integration of code changes from multiple contributors into a single software project it's a primary devops best practice allowing developers to frequently merge code changes into a central repository where builds and tests then run. Automated tools are used to assert the new code's correctness before integration. I think that definition touches on the practicals of the CI process a little bit more, but let me give you my take on it. So first, you're merging often. And whether you merge once a day or multiple times a day or at other frequencies, that really depends on your workplace, project, and team. The term itself is kind of funky, so I kind of want to define what integration means in this sense, because it's a little bit atypical to how I would usually use the term. So integration here in continuous integration refers to integrating branched or forked code into the current code base that all of the developers are working on. So when we say we're continuously integrating, we're constantly you know, taking code changes or features or bug fixes or anything, and we're integrating that into what's, you know, essentially going to go up to production. And by production, I mean live, if you're not used to that term. It's going to be actually on the site, the real thing, the thing that people are using in the real world. So in essence, CI is the opposite of waiting till the very end of a development cycle or sprint, if you do agile, to merge everyone's code. It's a way to avoid risks like a series of conflicts uh, when integrating code that was branched off from the main for like way too long. The sort of thinking behind it is that the more frequent that developers merge their code back into the main branch, the less likely they are to step on each other's toes. So if you and I were working on a code base together and we both branch off from the main branch and we start working on our own features or bug fixes or whatnot, at some point we're gonna need to merge that work back in together. And the more frequently we do that, the less likely and smaller the conflicts are going to be. If you happen to edit a couple lines of code that I also edited in my branch, then we're likely to have a conflict. Or even if you edited the way that a function works that my feature is using. So the earlier that we see that coming, the easier it is to address. I'm sure that many of you have been in a situation, if you have been developing for a while, where you have these massive uh, pull requests or merge conflicts that you're just, it's so much mental weight to comb through all of that code and try to even figure out what is going on and how much nicer that is when it's these really small little diffs that Git gives you. So yeah, the longer we go without merging, the bigger and more complicated the conflicts will be when we finally do merge, which can be exponentially difficult to reason about and resolve. Now, an important note about CI is that some people consider CI to be a sort of set of checks on the code that happen frequently, and that's 
kind of it. That's the basis of it. It's, it's sort of a practical tooling approach to it. Some people consider CI to be a way of life, and they have a very strict idea of what workflow constitutes a continuous integration workflow. That might be how many times you're merging a day, or actually, are you actually merging and deploying to production? And many definitions have it to where one merge a day is like the bare minimum. In this series, I'm just going to focus on the tools and methods to get you started because I think that's a lot more practical way to start learning continuous integration. Now you might have heard or seen the acronym CICD, which means continuous integration slash continuous deployment. I won't spend as long defining continuous deployment, but we are going to touch on it in this series because it's being a lot more intertwined into continuous integration nowadays. It's in the same spirit as CI, uh, but it's a little more focused on deploying a version of your software or app or site every time you merge or even when you open a pull request. So I'm gonna round this video off by saying that continuous integration is a sort of methodology for reliably you know, shipping, delivering code. But in this series, we're going to be focusing on the automation that allows us to live that lifestyle. I hope those definitions were useful for you, but I think it'll make even more sense when you start seeing what the workflow is like in the next video.